Welcome to the third installment of our developer blog for the upcoming 2.0 update for Battlecry of Freedom. Today, we're thrilled to introduce the feature that you've all been eagerly awaiting, Cavalry. Upon logging in, players will notice a new option available to them in their profile, the Stables. Here, players can choose their horse. Each horse comes with a unique color and saddle setup. With a total of 16 horses available, divided equally among the two teams, players have a diverse selection to choose from and can select their preferred horse to take into battle. In addition to the inclusion of horses, we have also introduced a new cavalry tab to the troop selection menu. With this update, we have added various new cavalry units, each equipped with unique uniforms and an exceptional selection of weapons, including revolvers, swords, carbines, and flags. Cavalry players will now spawn directly on the back of their selected horse from the stables. Horse movement controls are similar to infantry movement. However, unlike players, horses will not be able to instantly go up to their desired speed. Players must gradually accelerate and decelerate by pressing and holding the W key, with the turning radius growing as speed increases. We've also introduced the ability for players to make their horse rear up by pressing control plus space. This will bring the horse to an immediate standstill, regardless of its current speed. Because of the unique movement of horses, pressing A or D will cause the horse to turn left or right, as opposed to the side strafing movement of infantry. To move the horse laterally without any forward momentum, players can use the Q or E keys. This maneuver is particularly useful for forming up in formation. Horses are also capable of jumping over smaller obstacles such as fences. However, they must be moving at a minimum of 20% of their total speed to initiate a jump, and cannot jump from a standstill. When mounted on a horse, players will have access to the same melee and shooting mechanics as when on foot, including the same four swing directions for melee attacks. Players can aim and fire pistols and carbines while on horseback. The weapon sway will be significantly larger. Hitting a target while moving at full speed will be extremely challenging. Reloading firearms while on horseback is only possible when the horse is at a complete standstill. To counter cavalry charges, engineer constructibles such as chevaux de frise, palisades, or wooden sticks will now damage to horses. Cavalry needs to be extra careful. Any horse moving at sufficient speeds will impale itself on the sticks, resulting in either significant damage or death. In addition to cavalry, artillery will now also have access to horses. All artillery limbers will be towed by a pair of horses, significantly improving speed and maneuverability. Artillery units will no longer be constrained to their spawn and can now move around the battlefield relatively quickly. Although not as fast as cavalry horses, artillery horses can pull artillery pieces at a pace similar to an infantry player sprinting. Different artillery pieces will move at varying speeds. For instance, the 24-pounder howitzer has a lower top speed compared to the 6-pounder field gun which is the fastest artillery piece. While the artillery horses can be killed, this does not mean that the artillery will be immobilized. If the horses pulling the limber are dead, players can instead pull the limber manually by approaching its wheels, similar to the current live branch of the game. That concludes this week's developer blog. We appreciate your ongoing interest and support of our game. We can't wait to see you in action on the battlefield when the update is officially released on March 9th.